Today we're going to be talking about how to learn jazz standards. So one of the most important parts of developing as a jazz musician is being able to just show up in any situation, um, see a lead sheet for the first time, and know how to make sense of it using um, the tools that you've practiced. So today we're going to be going through eight steps to learn any jazz standard, and we're going to be using autumn leaves as an example. So let's get started. So step one of learning any jazz standard is going to be to uh, learn the bass notes. Um, so learning the bass notes to a jazz standard is going to connect your ears to the harmony, um, and it's going to kind of trigger all of these melodies to come out that you've been practicing. All of these licks, all of these scales are going to have more context when you have, um, you know, what the foundation or what the root of each chord is going to be. So using autumn leaves as an example, um, we're going to start with our bass notes of D to G to C. So we're in the key of C major, so we know that D is going to be the second degree, G is going to be the fifth degree, and C is going to be the one, so we have a two, five, one to start this chord progression. After that, we're going to go up to F, and we know that in the key of C, F is going to be the fourth, so so far we have two, five, one, four. Um, then we're going to move to B natural, to E, and to A. So we know that that root motion as it corresponds to A is going to be a minor 2, 5, 1, right? So in the key of C, this is going to be 7, 3, to 6. So um, the second time through, uh, that corporation is going to repeat. So we have again 2, 5, 1, 4. And then we have 7, 3, 6. And then the B section is going to start on B to E, back to A. So that again, that's a minor 2, 5, 1. Then we're going to have D, G, C. So that'll look familiar. We have a major 2, 5, 1 now. Up to 4, 7, this is B, E, into A, D, G, C. So that's a series of 2, 5, 1s. Just looking at that root motion, we go up a fourth, down a fifth, up a fourth, and then we have F, this is going to be the fourth uh, degree in the key of C major, into E, we can play that E up here, into A, so that's another cadence into uh, A, our um, six minor seven chord. Um, so while you're going through the bass notes, it'd be a great idea to try singing the bass line as well, that's just going to connect your ears even further to the harmony. Now let's move on to step two of learning jazz standards. Step two to learning any jazz standard is going to be to play through the harmony uh, using chord voicings. So I'm going to start with the D minor 7 for our 2 minor 7 chord. Move to G13. This will look familiar from previous lessons. This is going to be my 5 chord voicing into C major 7, then F major 7. So there's D minor 7, or the 2 to the 5. One to four major seven, and then we have B minor seven flat five. I'll use E seven flat nine for my five seven of six or the three seven chord into um, A minor seven, and then I'm going to set up the two with A seven flat thirteen. This will be our five of uh, two chord or our six seven. Then the same thing is going to repeat for the second A section. After that, we're going to do another 2 5, B minor 7 flat 5, E7 flat 9, A minor 7. Then we have that uh, 6 7 to set up the 2 minor 7 again. And this time I'll use D minor 9 as my voicing just to get a nice voice leading. You'll remember that uh, 7 flat 13 chord to a minor 9, 5 7, uh, G13, C major 9. Again, uh, F major 7 into B minor 7 flat 5, uh, E7 flat 9, and then we're going to have A minor 7, D9, G minor 7, and then C9. Right? So that same thing just happens down a whole step. And then we have F major 7, this is our 4 chord. 
back into a one minor seven. So I'd encourage you to try playing these chords through a wide variety of tempos, um, as well as trying to add uh, any tensions where you see fit. Now let's move on to step number three. So even though that was a lot of chords, uh, there are going to be standards that are more simple than um, autumn leaves, which you'll see tomorrow when we start working through blue bossa. So step number three to learning any jazz standard is going to be to learn the melody. Uh, so the melody is going to be the most important thing. Um, and when you're soloing through a tune, you can reference the melody. Um, that's just going to connect your improvisation to the tune so that you're approaching each tune that you play through um, differently. So to learn the melody to a jazz standard, you want to check out a lot of different recordings, um, preferably by guitar players, uh, because that's just going to show you how you can phrase the melody on the fretboard. Um, but listening to a lot of different versions, you're going to get different ideas for embellishing the melody, um, different ways of playing it on the neck, and you're also going to become fluent in playing the melody in different keys as well. I'd encourage you, um, when you're learning a melody to the tune, to sing it. Uh, through the changes. If there are lyrics, you should learn the lyrics to the standard. Um, and you should also learn how to play the melody um, to fit a wide variety of contexts. Um, so anytime I'm learning a melody, I make sure that I, I'll be able to play it in a guitar trio setting. So I might be trying to learn the melody uh, with some chord voicings to accompany myself. And I also try to learn the melody um, just as a single note line, uh, just in case there was a pianist or some uh, chordal instrument accompanying me as well. So when learning the melody, I'd recommend starting with the original recording if you can find one. Um, preferably start with uh, the original sheet music if you can find that as well. And after that, seek out the most listened to versions of this song. So to summarize step three, um, be able to play the melody as a single note line um, and also be able to play the melody as a chord melody or with um, a chordal accompaniment. So step number four to learning any jazz standard is going to be to learn the scales. Uh, so you want to map out the scales in different uh, positions on the neck, um, whatever positions feel comfortable to you. So for um, autumn leaves in the key of C, we're going to start with uh, D Dorian for our two minor seven chord. And sometimes, you know, the positions that you pick for these scales are going to be uh, kind of linked to whatever chord voicings that you're going to use. So if this is kind of my go-to D minor seven, or if this is, I'd prefer to play um, play the scale with the root on the fifth string there. Um, if this was kind of the position that I was thinking of, I might prefer to uh, use a D Dorian position that's up here. So after D Dorian, we have G Mixolydian. I'm gonna use this fingering down here at the third fret of the sixth string. And then we lead into C Ionian from there. After that, we move to the four chord where we're going to use um, F Ionian. I'm going to play out of this position here at the eighth fret. And then after that, we lead into the seven chord, B minor seven flat five, which is going to take B Locrian. So that scale is going to be here at the seventh fret of the sixth string. After that, we have two options for our five, seven of six. Um, one is going to be E Phrygian dominant. And the next scale is going to be E altered. So that was an example of the A section of Autumn Leaves. My advice to you after you figured out what scales to use is to uh, figure out which positions you're going to play the scales in. And this is going to be um, personal to you, whichever positions you feel most comfortable with. So step number five to learning any jazz standard is going to be um, to find arpeggios to play through the changes. So we're going to start uh, with our D minor seven. We're going to use a D minor seven arpeggio. Um, after that, we're going to move to G7 for the five chord. Then we're going to move to C major seven for the one chord, to F major seven for the four chord. Then we have B minor seven flat five for the seven minor seven flat five chord into E7 for the 5, 7 of 6, then into A minor 7, then A7 for the 6, 7 into the 2 minor 7. So this is just to give you an example of my workflow, how I would work through um, a jazz standard and specifically how I would work through the arpeggios, but the fingerings that you use for the arpeggios and the positions that you choose to play these arpeggios in are going to be personal to you. 
um, I just use whatever feels comfortable. So be sure to take this step slowly um, and just find arpeggio shapes that are going to be comfortable for you. So just as a quick recap, uh, we've learned the bass notes for our jazz standard, uh, we've learned the chords, then the melody, then we've learned uh, what scales we're going to use, and within those scales we've uh, found arpeggios which are going to be the go-to notes to highlight over a chord. So now um, with each of these layers you've built a foundation uh, which will be great to uh, build more complex concepts on top of. So step number six to learning a jazz standard is going to be to add in uh, licks that you know. Uh, so you have a lot of different options to pull from. Uh, we've covered a lot of different 2-5 licks. We've covered uh, licks that are going to go over isolated chords like minor 7 chords or major 7 chords. Now you have to find uh, where in the form you can use these licks. So when I'm approaching this tune um, over a 2-5, like the tune starts with, um, I might play something like this. So this is taking um, some things that you'll be familiar with, this 5, flat 3, 2, 1 shape, a chromatic approach into the 3rd of the 5 chord, and then down uh, the scale using the bebop scale passing tone. Um, I might also try to find licks that'll fit over um, isolated chords like I mentioned, so like we have our major 7 chords, I might find a lick um, that works over both of those chords, like a lick that I can use over C major 7 and then transpose into F major 7. So that might be something like this. And then I might just move that up to F major 7. Right? Um, over the minor 2-5, um, I might play something like this. Which you'll recognize from previous lessons. This is a minor 2-5 lick starting on G over our B minor 7 flat 5, going up the scalar passage on um, the B minor 7 flat 5, using B locrian, going down to E, and then leading into um, an altered scale passage, and then voice leading into the flat 3rd of the 6 minor 7 chord. Um, so wherever you see fit, you know, you can incorporate these licks, and this is just going to give um, your improvisation on the tune a little bit extra spice. So step number seven to learning any jazz standard is going to be to uh, write down or record an etude. So this is a super important step because basically you're going to be putting together um, all the concepts that we've talked about. You can incorporate scalar passages, you can incorporate chromaticism, any licks where you see fit. Uh, you really just want to kind of uh, compose like an etude as a wish list, like this is how I'd like to be able to improvise over this tune. And the goal is that um, dedicated and focused practice of this etude will then allow some of these ideas to come out when you do improvise over the tune. So step number eight to learning a jazz standard is finally going to be to improvise. Um, so we have all of the concepts that we can use, we have all of these devices, chromaticism, scales, arpeggios, we have our licks, and we also now have our etude to pull from. Um, so I'd recommend that you take measures of the etude um, that you like maybe the most um, and then try to improvise around those. You could even try uh, improvising for two bars, then playing part of the etude for two bars and kind of trading back and forth with um, improvised and composed material. Um, doing this is going to kind of like glue uh, these two ideas together where it's going to kind of blur the lines between improvisation and composition and you're just going to sound great over this tune. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below or maybe you have a suggestion on what our next tutorial should be. Now, if you want to continue learning, we've got you sorted. Check out this tutorial right here. Or if you want to apply what you've learned on a backing track featuring a live band, check this out. And if you feel like your guitar playing is plateauing by learning here on YouTube, get a free pickup music membership for 14 days. So if you're ready to take your guitar playing to the next level, click the link below in the description and I'll see you inside.